Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobleton. Welcome to Blender for Noobs and welcome back to this series of videos about the making of the Gobekli Tepe model. And uh, this is the last uh, screenshot that we looked at. So the next one is this close-up of the pillar. This is actually pillar number 43 in enclosure D. And on the right is an actual photo and on the left is the, one of the, the model of the pillar 43 that I created. And what I wanted to do here is kind of get like a comparison of what, you know, what both of them looked like and see if I was getting close to, you know, what the actual, now of course the lighting and everything is, is not added to the left one, but I just wanted to see how the um, inscriptions and the reliefs were coming out. And maybe what you could notice on, on these reliefs, on this, on these textures, uh, it's not the normal bump mapping that I was using before. Like I said, I had to find a way to bring these out so they were be uh, more visible, I guess you would say. Um, and I did kind of a walkthrough video just for my own reference. If anybody's interested in that, uh, I can make a video of it and show you the process I did to, to get this these bump mappings. Because as they were, um, if I had the light in a certain direction or something, they might look okay, but the ones on the other side wouldn't look okay. So I had to uh, come up with a way to make sure that they would show up clearly all the way around. So anyway, I was, I was happy the way, you know, with the way this was turning out so far. And here's just another view of the, the enclosure. You can see that I've got most of the uh, T shapes done here. So here you can see I'm starting on one of the center pillars here. And there you can see I have pretty much both of them done. Although I know, noticed, um, at some point I noticed that, you know, these were really too, um, you can see the 90 degree angles there. They're really too perfect. So I believe I went back and kind of uh, loosened that up a little bit. And just another view of the different pillars here. And you can see kind of the variation of how the texture looks far away and how it looks close up. And I was really happy with that because it gives a good variation depending on what kind of uh, what kind of renders you're you're doing. And here's kind of an overall view of all the um, main T shapes textured and pretty much placed where they need to be placed. You can see I'm starting to put some lower groundwork in there. Uh, just as this one was kind of as a placeholder, just so I know where that ground is supposed to be. And here you can see I'm working on trying to mimic some of the um, breakdown of the stones on the, on the actual site. So I got this kind of like a dip going on there. And on this one, what I've done is I've hidden most of the other pillars and I'm just con concentrating on a certain section here. And I'm starting to build up some stonework around this area right here. You can also see that how I've got this inner, inner groundwork laid out. And also you can see the base of the two center pillars here. These bases, uh, when those center pillars sit down inside these bases, there's only, it's, they're only 10 centimeters deep. Um, of course, because of the excavation, they've had to, you know, because of the age of them, they've had to reinforce them with two by fours or whatever that, that they've done. But um, it's pretty amazing that they've taken something of that size and that weight and put it in, in such a shallow area that obviously uh, held up <laughs> for thousands of years. It's just, it just, I don't know, it boggles the mind. In this shot, I uh, started to try to figure out how I was going to do the surrounding groundwork. And basically what I've done here is I've taken, um, I've created a plane and I've just extruded around the site. And I'm trying to hook it into the stonework. And I put this rocky, kind of rocky texture on it. And I guess you could, you could just take a, you know, create your plane and not put a texture on it and, and start you know, modeling it and, and making it, making sure that it's connecting to the stonework correctly and all that. But I like to try to, you know, I went ahead and put a texture on it, even if it's not going to be the final texture, 
so I can more easily visualize what this is going to look like. And when I put this on, you know, it made me think, you know, I could really, this is possible. I can make it kind of look like the site and get it kind of believable if I can. So that was the purpose of putting that texture on there. And just another screenshot with a black background here. And this is another one kind of showing up. I've kind of still trying to get the ground to come up to the stonework correctly. And you can see this section right here where it kind of goes in like a, the ground is coming down where these blocks have fallen down. And you see I've got some random, random uh, stones laying around there. And this one you can see I've kind of curved it a little bit. Just trying to get some variation on the site and also try to get it as close to what the site looks like as possible. And here we go with um, trying some test renders. So you can see like in this area right here, I still had some work to do there to get that correct. Um, but I wanted to try out with different lighting and see if things were looking okay. And when I did this, I, I thought, okay, you know, this is really possible. I can, I can get this to look the way that it needs to look. Just need to do some more work on it but and you know get the coloring right if i can and that's just a different angle and this is a shot that i decided i wanted to try to use an hdri background and see how that was looking so you can get some interesting effects doing that and this is another one you can see in this where i'm looking up here this extreme close up here of some of the ground didn't look too good and you can see underneath these stones you can see that they're hollows which is not good so but it's kind of interesting how the sky looks there the sky looks really real and just another shot of that another test shot using the hdri background and another one just playing around with different lighting to see you know what this is going to look like this one's kind of a wide angle view And this one here was, I think I made this a screenshot. I um, was pretty happy with the way the lighting turned out for the most part. But again, I still still had more work to do. And this one, again, just playing around the, with the lighting, trying to see what is possible and how it would look using the different lighting effects. This one would be just like a oversaturated, you know, very bright sunlight kind of look. And just a different variation of that light. And you can see on this one, I think I finally fixed that one area over here where you could see the back end a little bit. I've also added a number of um, top bricks. So it looks like, you know, it gives the illusion that there's kind of a larger wall going on there. And of course, a lot of this kind of random rocks kind of laid around. And you can see some outside on this ground texture too. The ground, of course, is just texture, and then I have a few actual modeled rocks laying around to kind of give that variation, give it a more realistic look. And, <laughs> of course, when I was doing this, I just I got too far into the reds, I guess. I had somebody comment, I didn't know Gobekli Tepe was on Mars. But, um, you know, when you work in something for so long, you tend, you know, you spend too many hours on it at one time, you tend to kind of lose objectivity to it, and lose your reference uh, frame of mind of what it should look like. Because at the time when I was doing this, I thought, oh, yeah, this is great. This is the colors. <laughs> Amazing. And just getting some different uh, angles here just to see what it was looking like. And here again, I have the, the uh, Pillar 43 comparison. So I have one before that we looked at with just the basic model with no you know specific lighting or anything. And then I have this one here 
where I've added some, you know, I got the background lighting to it. So even though I don't have the lighting correct here or very good, I could compare these two and I was really happy with um, the comparison. I mean, it's very close to the actual, actual stonework. So here's where I finally realized that, you know, my Mars color just wasn't working and I kind of fixed that a little bit, but I, I played around a lot with the colors. I really, I wasn't getting the, the type of look that I was uh, going for. So I did a lot of playing around there and you see, I added also some kind of a big boulders around there. So in this comparison right here, you can see the, uh, the bump mapping as they were just with bump mapping applied and on the right you can see with um, how I changed the bump mapping and I actually found a way to have that kind of pop out a little, a little bit more in order to to get that to look better or at least come out be more visible to to the viewer and basically what I did is I used the bump mapping and I also added a, a texturing to it. So, like I say, I've created a whole video of, of how I did that, if anybody's interested. So this just kind of shows a progression of the textures that I did. The, you know, this isn't really the original original, but uh, the original textures that I used, and then the new textures that I created, and then an actual reference uh, photo from the site. So hopefully you can see why I was, I was happy with what I came up with here. It just looked so much closer to the actual reference photo than, than my original textures did. <laughs> and these are just some Im images showing the different tests that I was doing with the textures. I had this texture um, playing with the bump maps and it showed very detailed pits. And then I changed the bump mapping to try to get a better look on the textures. Uh, also, showed how I was uh, modifying the reliefs with the bump mapping at the bottom. And then the textures, what I did, because they were so uh, pitted looking um, and too much, really kind of too much detail, I added some blur to the uh, texture in order to give it the effect that you're seeing there. And I'm not sure what I'm saying at the bottom because I did um, end up using the, the new way that I was doing it there. And so now we come to the end of enclosure D. So this is what I ended up with this enclosure. And I created this model. I put it up on Turbo Squid. It's been very successful. Um, I've seen it used in more than one place. But of course, the National Geographic documentary was that was like, wow, that's that's really that's really cool to find out. Um, so. I toyed with the idea of possibly doing the entire site there, or you know the one, the, the part of the site that's excavated so far. And I knew again, I knew it was just going to be a lot of work, but I just so so wanted to do it. So in part three, I'm going to kind of show you, walk you through what I decided to do, what I came up with for the full Gobekli Tepe site. So I'll see you in the next video.